we continue with the second stanza of lotus eaters the lotus eaters which is a land of peace and harmony it is full of sweet music and brings sleeps to the tired eyes and there is coolness and quietness all around the land of lotus he says when everything else in nature has rest why should man the supreme creation of god be ever tolling why are we weighed upon with heaviness and utterly consumed with sharp distress while all things else have rest from weariness he asks that everything in nature rest for a time but we are overburdened we are very tired we have utterly wasted our consumed our energies and in nature when everything has rest why should we toil alone why are we toiling alone and make perpetual moan and this toil and labor is causing us to make a perpetual moaning we only toil who are the first of things because we are the first of things we are the supremest creatures of god still we make an eternal bemoaning and grumbling and still from one sorrow continuously from one sorrow to another sorrow to anxieties and worries we are thrown we never fold our wings we never rest we never retire and cease from our wanderings we never give up our toils and labors we never steep nor our brows in slumbers holy balm we never so can take a bath or bathe rather our energies into slumber into sleeps holy balm we never hearken we never listen to the inner spirit song the sweet soothing music that our inner spirit is singing there is no joy but calm the real happiness he says lies in calm lies in peace lies in rest so why should we only toil the roof and crown of things we are the highest and the most superior of all the products and the creatures that have been created by god so why should we not take rest then suddenly he says look in the middle of the wood the folded leaf is wood out from the bud in the middle all the objects of nature have life of peace and rest and they don't show any signs of exertion and the leaf the fruit the flowers they all have a peaceful existence away from anxieties worries and toils so in the middle of the wood the folded leaf also is wood out from the bud with winds upon the branch and there grows green and broad so the leaves are also having their natural growths and they don't care they take no care sun steep at noon during the time noon time they sun are sun steep nightly dew fed during the night they are they feed on the dews turning yellow they are burnt yellow by the sun fall and then float down the air look the sweeten with summer light the full joy apple the, with the the sunlight helps the flowers or the fruits to ripen up and they are made sweeter by the summer light the full juiced apple waxing over mellow sometimes this waxing it's becoming very uh, ripe over mellowed drops in a silent autumn night suddenly it also drops in a silent autumn night everything in nature is allotted length of days everything in nature is allotted a fixed tenure a fixed time period the flower they ripen in its place they ripe they fade they fall and hath no toil they don't labor they uh, do it automatically naturally they do it fast rooted in the fruitful sun they are not moving as the mariners are they are fast rooted live in the fruitful soil uh, in the fertile soil and therefore everything in nature god has created has a natural course of living and dying hateful is the dark blue sky whereas for the mariners he says that the sky which is causing us hatred or showing some kind of a disgust when death he says is the end of life why should we toil toil when objects of nature have a peaceful and rest restful existence why should man alone toil himself to death and instead of he says living a life of trouble and toil we have we should spend the rest of our lives in um resting and peace they are tired of activities the blue sky is vaulted it's covering the earth like an arc over the dark blue sky death is the end of life 
and why are we wasting our labor and drudging us let us alone time driveth onward fast time is moving very fast and a little while when our lips are dumb when we are all dead let us alone we are we should live in peace because nothing is going to last everything is taken away from us during the death and become portion and parcel of past and we all become portion we leave everything here and we we move into a gloomy abyss of the past and pleasure to war with evil we don't find any kind of a pleasure what is the pleasure in finding and against the evil there is no peace to climb over the climbing waves to always continue moving on the mounting waves everything in nature have rest and they ride towards silently move towards their graves in silence very calmly calmly and very peacefully in nature all things ripe fall and then stop and cease we also long for a long rest or death and even dreadful ease is preferred to a life of toil how sweet it is here to listen to the flowing uh, sound of the downward stream and with half shut in a state of dreaminess half shut eyes we should fall asleep to dream and dream continuously like yonder yellow lights the yellow light which is not going to leave the mira bush the type of a bush on the height and they are talking to each other in a whispered speech and we rest here eating the lotus every day day by day and watch the crisping ripples uh, the curly waves on the beaches and curl at the edges and the tender curving lines of creamy foam that it sheds and lends to our hearts this atmosphere is uh, making us to give our hearts surrender our hearts completely to the influence of mild my melancholy to the influence of meditative state and muse and brood we should contemplate here live here in memory in the past and a very pensive and thoughtful mood these old faces of our infancy or the childhood uh, heaped over a mount of grass they will one day find their place in the grass two handfuls of white shutten on a grass they will one day shutten uh, the memory of our wedded lives is very dear to us very close to our hearts and the last embrace of our wives is very dear the warm tears we still remember they have suffered a taint time must have brought about a change and our sons have inherited us our looks have become uh, strange because we have wrinkles on our faces we have grown old uh, we should come to and reach to them and they will find us like ghosts because we will be disturbing their comfortable lives and the island princess they will be overbold by now they have eaten their uh, substances or the properties that we have left behind and the group of singers they must have been entertaining to them and after the long 10 years war of troy and after those great deeds and half forgotten deeds there is no disorder in the uh, island and what is broken or what is disturbed let it remain like that the gods which are very hard to uh, propitiate or by like reconcile by our prayers it is hard to settle again so we will create more confusion confusion worse than the trouble or the feeling of death so long labor we have we have done a long labor and to it's a too big a problem for us to our hearts to be worn out of so many wars we have fought and eyes which have grown dim with the gazing on the pilot star on the pole star continuously but we should recline and support ourselves on the beds of the flowers and herbs and sweet warm airs they lull us and blow us to sleep with half drop half closed eyelids we beneath this heaven which is shaded with clouds we will watch the long bright river downing slowly and water the see the water sound hear the water sound from the purple hills who will convey an echoing sound of the dripping caves and from cave to cave through the thick twin vine we will watch the emerald color green tint of the foliage and through many of kind of a acanthus or woven's very divines we'll see the sparkling brines the salted water streams and we will hear the sweet sounds of the spread 
among the pines and the lotus which blooms during the barren peak it blo blooms and blows by every winding creek this island is captured by some is a beautiful place and we have enough of action let us therefore take an oath and keep this oath with determination that we will always stay on this beautiful land which is free from toil and disease and the mariners after comparing and contrasting their life of on this island with the world of ireland concludes that staying on this little island is better than a life of toil and trouble and therefore they would stay on the island would not wander any more on any other place and he says let us swear an oath with equal mind with a very strong will that in the hollow lotus land we will always live because he says on the their golden houses when the gods live careless of mankind up above in the heaven and they are lying beside their lake of nectar and the bowls are thunder bowls are hurled, being hurled by gods below in the valleys and the clouds are tightly coiled their golden houses which are girdled with the gleaming stars they are smiling secretly and look over wasted lands on the earth and blight and famine and plague and earthquakes are being caused there are constant flights faming towns sinking ships and praying hands but they still smile because the they find music which is centered around the mournful groans of people a lamentations and ancient tales of wrongs which have been done and it is a tale which has no little meaning because the decisions are strong and chant they have been chanted by the because man has been treated badly and sowing the harvest with enduring toils continuously so we have been thrown on this earth to suffer endless anguish and gods live in hub uh, elizon or heavens uh, up above the sky and their weary limbs at last they will reside on the beds of asphodel and surely he says slumber is always sweeter than the toil that we do and labor uh, in the amidst the wind and the waves and oars we are going to rest here brother mariners and we will wander no more